Hi, Matt. <clears throat> hey, how's, how's it going? Doing good. You? Good. Uh, is everything clear? Uh, yeah, it is. Cool. Can you hear my end? Yeah, yeah. I just put my headphones in, so. All right, I was perfect. Just sold that all out. All right, perfect. Uh, glad to have you here. What's that? Glad to have you here. Oh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on board. Appreciate all right, it. Uh, all right. You doing good? Yeah, all good. All right, perfect. Uh, let's get this started then. <clears throat> okay, so one race in, first in you like start in 2,506 days, and you're already the points <laughs> leader. That's 19 wins and 48 career road to win your races for you. Second best win percentage all time. Sorry, sorry. How does it feel? Like, has it truly sunk in yet that you're not only back in the Indy car ladder, but you're also winning? Um. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's definitely a, it, it was definitely a sweet um, victory to come back and, and have that success. But uh, I think it's sunk in. I mean, there's a lot of work still. There's a lot of uh, season left. Um, and you know, having some early success like that is just I mean, as you said, it's 2,800 days and, and all stats. I mean, it's uh, coming back and working hard and, and having everything come together and having success like that in the first race. I wasn't expecting it, but, I mean, it was – I've definitely celebrated it. And, uh, and I, you know, if anything, I'm ready to get back to work and just and just keep plugging away at the season. But, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was a very special um, – and gratifying kind of moment um, to get that under the belt. On the yeah. You know, it was lucky, but um, I mean, I'll take it, and uh, and it's definitely uh, definitely pretty cool. Does it feel a little more special knowing that it was at St. Petersburg, which is basically like your home track? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I love Florida, and I was originally born in Florida, but uh, I mean, I I've been to St. Pete quite a lot, and you know it. It's usually the first race of the year for a lot of series, so um, yeah, it was it was special. But I think, you know, I think the thing that made the whole um, result and the and the endings, you know, the most special and made it that it made it so gratifying was just as you said, like the time off um, and being out on the sidelines for so long watching, and then finally uh, getting an opportunity to come back and. And having saw that gratification of you know I still got it and I can still do this and I'm back and I'm, I'm ready to go so yeah that I would say that was the overwhelming um, part of the emotion was was the time off but yeah for sure um, it being in Florida and at St Pete was a, was a small factor as well. So we get to kind of build upon that time off. You're you're 28 now. You're the oldest driver in the field by quite a margin, and considering everyone else is in their late teens. Does it ever feel odd knowing you're much older and more experienced with this series than everyone else? Or do you feel like that time away kind of levels the playing field to the point where you're basically starting back at square one? Um, a, bit, a bit of both, really. I mean, obviously, I think uh, it, it is – I'm definitely the older guy coming back, and, I, and I'm, I'm constantly reminded of that by my, my younger teammates and, uh, and everyone else. But uh, I think if you look back at the series, there's been a lot of guys – um, the same age, if not older than I am, that come back and and race Indy Lights before going on to, to other things. You know, I, I can think of a couple of names as examples, but, you know, Max Chilton went from F1 back to Lights, you know, to get used to the American side of things. And then Felix Rosenquist from Formula E, um, you know, coming and doing Lights. And then, you know, when I raced Lights in 2014, um, I remember there was a 28-year-old, and his, his name was Louis Razia, he he just finished second in the Formula Two championship, um, and had, there was no spots for him in F1. So, yeah, I mean, I I think there's I'm not the only one, right? I, you know, obviously I'm the, the veteran this year and the older guy, but as you said, I think that time off, um, it's not like I, I have a huge advantage over, over all these kids. Um, obviously, I'm experienced and I've raced a lot of stuff, and I can bring that knowledge and and use it to my advantage. But if you look at it. You can look at it the other way where, you know, my teammates have been racing for five, six years all in a row in open wheel cars on the road to Indy. Um, whereas, you know, over the last five or six years, I, I haven't been racing, um, open wheelers full time yet. Yeah. And I've been doing the trucks and stuff, but not, um, you know, it's not like it's, uh, it's a super close style of racing, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> 
Okay, so let's let's switch gears over to stadium trucks then. You made your SSP debut at Toronto 2015 as basically a substitute for Paul Tracy before mm-hmm. going full time in 2016. Even though SSP does for a car, considering your background in open wheel, what made you decide to commit to an off road truck series? Um, honestly, it was just it just all fell into place. You know, much like this opportunity in your life, um, I didn't have too much else going on. And, you know, I was driver coaching at that, that first race in Toronto when I jumped in. Um, and, you know, as much as I love driver coaching and helping young kids out, it's not, it's not where I want to be, right? So I just kind of fell into that opportunity. And then the way the Super Trucks were structured with the prize money um, and obviously getting opportunities you know, the sponsors that were involved in the series to keep racing, it just made perfect sense for me to do and, and make a living doing it. So, um, you know, it paid bills and it, it was a great lifestyle and we were traveling all over and having a lot of fun. So, I mean, I just, I just loved it. I mean, that, that to me is, it is almost as pure racing as you can get, you know, living off the prize money and, and, uh, and racing with, uh, you know, some seriously good competition and Robbie Gordon and, and all the other off-road guys and people from different disciplines coming in. So, I mean, I just absolutely loved it. But, uh, you know, having said that, as much as I loved it, my ultimate goal has always been IndyCar. And uh, even though I was racing and, and quite content in the super trucks and doing well, you know, every single year I've been racing trucks, I've also been trying to get opportunities in IndyCar and open wheel again. So um, I think for sure it's definitely... Um, my time to, 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 you know, re-enter the open wheel stuff and start, you know, following my kind of childhood dream of, of going Indy 500 and racing an IndyCar full-time and having success there. So super trucks and open wheelers are obviously completely different worlds in terms of things like vehicle setup and driving style, but you have proven that you can win in both. Do you feel that there is anything that you might have picked up from SST that can be applied to driving an IndyCar or vice versa? Yeah, I, I think so for sure. I think, um, a lot of the stuff that I learned from Robbie and uh, and all those guys from different disciplines was, you know, making um, different driving styles and, and different approaches work um, for different types of corners. And, you know, those guys are so versatile that, you know, I think open wheel drivers can definitely get caught in a little bit of a rut. You know, I think that's like one of the biggest crossovers I found is the, the Indy light car originally – it, it's completely opposite to really what I am used to um, driving style wise with most open wheel cars. And I think because I've just adapted to so many different cars, I just, I, I've been able to just completely alter my driving style and adapt to the Indy lights car, which I think obviously if I jumped in an Indy car, I might have to do as well. But yeah, I, the Indy lights car has been quite weird to drive. And if I had been driving, the Indy Lights car the way I did in 2014, you know, I'd, I'd be terrible. So I think that's been huge is just having the versatility of adapting a driving style. Um, but I think what crosses over from the open wheel side is is the road racing stuff and, and the corner speeds and and kind of uh, the smoothness of getting the most out of um, the tight corners and slowing corners. Whereas I think the, open, the off-road and the super truck guys, um, tend to be a bit more ragged and uh, and on the edge and, and less smooth, but they're still fast. But I think that's kind of the differences I've found is definitely, yeah, I'd say the biggest thing is, is the off-road and the super truck style is a bit more aggressive and um, and over the grip limit and you, you, you're sideways a lot more. Um, whereas the open wheel is you, you're always kind of wanting, you always push the front of the car into the corner and you're always a lot smoother. So, Having done all of that stuff, you know, I think it'd be interesting to see, you know, maybe there's a wet weather race this year and I'll be really good with all my dirt experience and the wet weather. And who knows, maybe I'll be really good at oval too, um, being used to the car being loose. So I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But I think I think the super truck has been a massive help. And, and you've seen that with you know, guys like Sheldon Creed too, going to NASCAR and doing well. The super truck definitely prepares you for anything. Now, you're not the only driver in the Neelite with SSP experience because Jacob Abel, he ran at Nashville and Long Beach last year. Have you ever talked to each other about either series, like him approaching you for pointers on driving the stadium truck? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I try to help everyone out with the super trucks as much as I can, and, and I tried to help Jacob, and he, he was actually really good in the super truck uh, at, at those races, and I was quite impressed. So, um, obviously, he's running his own team, and, and there's a lot of struggles with that, but I think he'll be good this year, too, in lights, um, especially once he kind of figures it out. Um, but, yeah, it's it's cool to have someone who has that experience, because at least I can kind of bounce things off of them and and kind of relate to them in, in a way that they've, you know, experienced a super truck and compare it to, to open wheel cars and how different it is. But yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see him doing well for sure. And I guess you kind of stick on the topic of other drivers in the field that uh, you raced against Ernie Francis and Trans Am. How was that experience like when you were subbing in for Chris Dyson? Yeah, that was, that was awesome. I mean, I, I had so much fun. I mean, that, was, that again was, I think that the Trans Am, probably relates more to the super truck um, than the open wheel cars do, you know, with the way the, the car moves and, and the horsepower and everything. So I had a great time jumping in and, and we had an awesome race. I mean, we were side by side the whole last lap of that race and, and I just come away with a win, but yeah, he, he's, he was great fun to race with him. And, um, and he's a good racer too. So it's going to be great to be, it's great to be racing with him in the lights too. And, same thing with Abel, you know, there's a lot of stuff that I can relate with him, you know, coming from Trans Am and having that experience we can talk about and get along with, with you know, how it's different to the lights car. But yeah, I'd say, I'd say for sure, you know, he, he's obviously having a little bit more, or he needs a bit more time to get used to it than, you know, me coming from super trucks to Trans Am. I think, I think I was telling Ernie the other day, I'm like, man, you'd be good in a super truck too. Cause that's, that's basically similar to the Trans Am. Um, but yeah, it, it's a lot different to a lights car, so it's definitely taken me time to adjust. It's going to take him time to adjust too. But yeah, that race with Chris, I mean, obviously Chris had some some issues, so my thoughts are with him. But um, yeah, that was just amazing. I, I'm so grateful to Chris Dyson and, and that team. He his team is uh, one of the best teams I've ever worked with. I mean, they're so professional and do such a good job that it just made it easy for me to jump in like that and do well. But I'd say most of that credit goes to the team and, and Chris and his guys. I guess you kind of build on the topic of racing in all these other series. Your racing portfolio is pretty diverse now. You've got things like Formula E, supercars, sports cars, finished cars, and even jet skis. Have you ever thought about mm-hmm. expanding your horizons more by racing in like NASCAR or Rallycross should the opportunity arise? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I keep telling the Rallycross guys, I'm like, look, we I race on dirt and do way bigger jumps in the super trucks, like, and I'd be really good at Rallycross, but yeah, no, no opportunities have come up there yet. But I keep telling them, I'm like, do you stick me in a Rallycross car? I'm gonna be pretty good. But yeah, no opportunities there. But I'd love to do anything, as you said, and um, yeah, I mean, doing all that stuff helps uh, at the end of the day. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to do it. Um, I did a little bit of NASCAR stuff a while ago. Like I, I did a super late model race um, with David Gilliland's team with, um, a long time ago. And, and I really loved that NASCAR stuff too. I mean, the, the racing is so competitive it, in, and that's what's fun. I found super fun with that too. But the one thing I haven't really done is, is like the, the midgets and the sprint car stuff uh, on, you know, like the chili bowl or I know they have a race at Indy at the IMS on the you know that small dirt um midget racing and, and sprint car racing i think that's something that I've, I've been missing out on for sure talking to all the racing drivers that do it they say that's that's on the bucket list so i'd love to give that a shot at some point but obviously obviously my focus this year is indy lights and uh doing as best as i can in that and hopefully you know moving on to indy car so you know who knows when any of those opportunities will come up but yeah i'm I, you know I, I say yes to everything so i've i've definitely uh Definitely open to it all. So let's say you can pick one NASCAR race to run. What would it be? Like I imagine the, the Daytona 500 is on everyone's bucket list, but you're also pretty savvy with road courses, and obviously there's Indianapolis too. So if you could pick one, which where would you like to race? The Indy 500. There's a lot of uh, stuff I can relate. Um, in terms of like the strategies and the pit stops and, um, you know, racing in a pack in the draft, I think, and, and also the history, when I mean, I'd have to do the, Indy, the Daytona 500, I'd love to do that. But yeah, I think if I was going to have the most chance of winning a race, 
yeah, probably, probably a road course because those guys um, are racing on ovals every weekend. And if you're not racing every weekend on an oval, like it's tough to to keep up with the competition. So I'd say yeah, my chances of of winning would probably be better on a on a road course. But I mean, if I had to pick one, I'd pick a Daytona 500. That makes sense. <clears throat> anyway, now speaking of vintage racing, you've gone up against your dad a couple of times in vintage cars. How big of an influence was he for you as a driver? And how special was it to get to race against him? It was it was massive. I mean, he his influence in my career and everything is is you know he's he's been uh, the guy that's taught me everything really um, in terms of racing because you know we race go karts together uh, and all the way up through and he, he's always been supportive of my racing. So yeah, I'd say I learned. Yeah, he, he's and he's been the driver coach, right? Like they we never had driver coaches. Um, until recently, and, and now it's getting a bit more of a big deal. You know, even a lot of the IndyCar guys have coaches and people helping them out with the driving side of things. But for me, yeah, it was just always my dad, and, and he always helped out uh, tremendously. But, yeah, it's a race, like, vintage with him. I mean, it's not often that you get to say, or any racing car guy can say that he's raced with his dad and, and raced competitively. Like, dad, dad was competitive in those vintage races, so... We had some on, like really good on track battles, you know, passing every lap and uh, outbreaking each other. And I think uh, obviously Dad's not in his prime, but in his prime, I mean, oh man, it would be it would be crazy to race him. <laughs> he's pretty good. And he's still very good. So yeah, it was just a just an honor, and obviously grateful that I'm able to to do those things, and, and Dad is able to do those things too. And I guess on the other side of your family, your mom, she does jet ski racing. And I believe you have raced against her a few times as well. How has that been like? Like, how does jet skiing apply to your driving skills in cars? Yeah, I mean, I think it all relates. Like, you know, I'm I'm, I'm pretty good on a jet ski and um, and the racing and the, and the competitiveness, it shines through on everything. But, yeah, like, just it's kind of the same feeling, you know, obviously racing with my dad. Um, it, was, it was a pretty big honor, and, and it's special. And um, you know, I'm just grateful because you know how many people get to do that. I get to do it with my mom too, and I've raced against my mom. So having raced against her and my dad, I mean, yeah, we 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 share that competitive um, passion, and it just brings us closer together. So I, I mean, I have an absolute blast racing jet skis, and I mean, it it relates too. You know, there's there's lines um, and there's ways that you approach the apexes of the buoys and it's the same kind of theory with um, race cars where, you know, you know, slow in fast out and getting on the power and, you know, re- reducing the the time that you're off the throttle and, and it all relates and, and you have that knack, you, you kind of get the feeling and the knack for what feels fast and what doesn't. And it's exactly the same feeling on jet ski. So I had a great time kind of transitioning over to jet ski racing and, and doing that for fun on the side as a hobby with, with my mom. Okay. Well, uh, any plans for the future, or are you just planning on taking things one race at a time? Like, IndyCar is still your ultimate goal, but have you considered maybe returning to stadium super, super trucks every once in a while if it doesn't clash with your Indy obligation? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's, uh, as I said, I've said, I said to a couple of people, you know, racing Indy Lights, it's going to be hard to, to make a living and, and pay the bills because it's, it's just, uh, just the way Indy Lights is. Um, so, I might have to do a couple of super truck races and, and, uh, here and there to kind of keep the bills going and, and, uh, and pay and keep the rent up. But no, I think I'll, I'll definitely try and do races that don't clash. I don't, I don't think I could do like a double header weekend where I race both trucks and, um, Indy lights because Indy lights just takes up all my time, especially on the engineering side. Whereas, you know, trucks is a bit easier, but yeah, I'll, I'll try not to do any of the truck races that clash and just focus on lights if that's on the same weekend. But there's a possibility of obviously me doing Long Beach because in the super trucks, because we don't have a uh, Indy lights there. So yeah, I think I, I might make race Long Beach depending on a few things and do as many races as I can just to kind of stay busy. And I think it helps. Like if I'm racing every weekend, it's it's better than not racing every weekend. Right. So I got, got the super trucks I can do maybe a couple of races and then, I'll also be doing the two-seater IndyCar as well at a couple of events coming up here this month. So, yeah, definitely going to be busy in between all the live stuff for sure.
I think Toronto is on the SST schedule this year, but it doesn't clash with India Light. And uh, you have had success at Toronto in the past in SST. Like I remembered in 2016, you had this great battle of Sheldon Creed for the finish. I was yeah. like racing against him. Oh, yeah, he's he's really good. I mean, he is like the epitome of, of competition to me, right? Like he always kind of finds that last little bit or that last inch of track to get down the inside. And, and it's, and I'm the same way. And it's just resulted in some of the best battles I've ever had um, door to door. And, uh, and it's always on, like when he comes to the super trucks, you know, I, I step it up a level and he just brings, elevates the level. And I think it's the same, obviously when I come and race with him in super trucks, it, we just push each other to that next level. Um, and I just love racing with him. So yeah, Toronto could be a possibility and, and who knows Sheldon, he raced a couple of races last year with us too. So, you know, who knows what he's doing this year, but it'd be great to get back on track um, with him. Yeah, it's great, great to race with. No, for Sheldon, obviously comes from more of an off-road background than you. Would you say that his driving style has kind of rubbed off on you in a way or even the other way around? Yeah, I think both of us have learned from each other. Um, I think for sure he had that r- ruggedness of, uh, of off-road where, you know, he was a lot more... Um, you know, likely to throw it sideways and find time um, by doing that and being, and you know, being a bit more rougher with the driving style, whereas I was a lot smoother. And I've noticed that we've definitely, like, crossed a lot of things that we've learned off each other. Like, I'd say he's a lot smoother driver now, and I, when I race trucks, I can be a lot more aggressive now, too. So, yeah, we've definitely learned off each other, and there's things that we both use that we've learned off each other for sure. I guess you kind of stay on the topic of learning from someone else. Uh, Robbie Gordon, obviously you worked with him for seven years, and he also has IndyCar experience. Did he, did he ever serve as like a mentor for you for like both IndyCar off-road, but also like maybe things off the track was on the business side of things? Yeah, I mean he's 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 like quite the guy. Um, whether it's engineering and designing a chassis, and um, you know his knowledge on that side has just blown me away. You know, I didn't. I think it's quite kind of rare. You know, there's no one like that anymore and that kind of reminds me of the old days especially like listening to stories of my grandfather and stuff when my grandfather was designing cars and engineering and running his own shop it's a, I see that a lot in Robbie and, it, and I've learned a lot from him like on the setup how to set up cars and the suspension and engineering and chassis design and, and all those things It's it's been really cool to kind of watch Robbie go through that um, and you know he's he's quite good on the business side too I mean he knows how to put on a show and, and he knows what good racing is and how to get good racing out of a car. I mean, that's what's been impressive to me is you watch all these series like NASCAR and IndyCar spend millions and millions of dollars and time and resources and, and years trying to make the racing good and they can never do it. Like I feel like they always shoot themselves in the foot and they get greedy or something happens and they... And the race, and it kills the racing, and people can't follow, and it's not as exciting. Where for Robbie, he, I think being a true racer and watching him kind of design the trucks and keep them in a place that they always race good, like you can always follow, you can always have good races. You get the sense that that side of this is anyone good in that term, and also driving too. I mean, he's he's kind of the same as Sheldon and and myself, where we've all been learning off each other, and, and he brings a whole other aspect. Is, is driving. Uh, all right. And, uh, is there anything else you would like to discuss or comment on? Um, no, not really. I mean, yeah, just obviously it's a bit, it's a long year ahead. So obviously I'm going to go back and put my head down and just keep working away. And obviously I'm grateful and thankful to, you know, my sponsor mastermind and, and everyone that's uh, supporting me and been a big help and, and, and Andretti too. You know, Andretti have, um, been so good to me and have been almost pretty, they basically treated me like family. So to be a part of that and, and having success with them again, it's, it's definitely refreshing. So yeah, that's, that's all I would say really. All right. It's been good talking to you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Likewise. Everything right with you regardless. Yeah. Things are going well here. Uh, you're actually the very first person I've ever gotten to interview. So it's, oh, it's cool. a pretty nerve wracking experience to be honest. Oh no, you're, you're doing a great job. Yeah. The questions you asked are really good. So. I'd say you're a lot better than than all the people I've interviewed so far, so thanks. Thank you.